goats, I said. I won't follow them, but they brought the goats anyway. Welcome to the Ann Lister Bake Off. I'm very excited to be with you here today. We're going to be looking at all things Ann Lister and baked good. It's in honor of her birthday. She's an Aries, but nobody's perfect. Over 50 entries today in the Bake Off, which is very, very exciting. We have selected uh, a, a, a little over 20 of them. My name is Kate McCabe, by the way. I haven't introduced myself. Uh, please do keep yourself on mute. Uh, there will be the power to turn your uh, audio back on if you'd like to or you need to. But for now, uh, try to keep it on mute so we can, I don't know, not get interrupted by people who are dying to get booted out of the call. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm not here by myself talking about these cakes and potentially roasting them. That's right, because it's gonna be kind of a Saturday roast as well of these baked goods. There is a very special judge, of course, for Ann Lister's birthday, who would be the judge of all these baked goods that people have labored so intensively over, so much fondant, but Ann Lister herself. Please, Ann Lister, come to the screen. <gasps> Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's it's a it's a pleasure. Thank you for being here. Uh, have you uh, any idea of uh, the baked goods that you're about to witness? Have you been following the Twitter hashtag? Anything? Seen any I've, of the threads? I've heard rumblings, uh, but I'm very excited to dig in and see what everyone's prepared for me on my birthday. For, all for you on your birthday. Obviously, this will be a visual feast for us all. We're just going to have to trust that they all tasted good. There are some where you're going to be able to assess it visually, whether it was a success or a failure. Uh, we will be going through several of our favorites via a slideshow. Who doesn't love a slideshow? So uh, if you don't mind, may we see the first entry, please? Ah, the do on a Dutch apple tart. I quite like this one. You might send it back saying, waiter, there's a hair in my cake. But very iconic, very iconic. Maybe a second only to Princess Leia, but I think by the time season two comes around, more iconic than Princess Leia. I think you, Janie, has to take notes from this one. If I could get my sausage curls as tight as this baker did, it would, be, it would be a much easier life. I think we'll be enrolling Eugenie in some baking classes to get her up to speed. Excellent, she has a very delicate constitution. So just watch the lactose. We know this about her. Uh, yes, next slide, please. Ah, the Thermami. Here we have, uh, and you'll feel very close to this one, your beloved thermometer. So this I'd say, Thermama Mia. What an enormous mass. It looks I, I will, almost I will, as big as mine, but we can compare later. I will say medically, uh, if you do want to know your own internal temperature, you have to shove this cake straight up your ass. So it's a little back to front, the way this one would normally work. So sorry, Steph Galloway, but medically, it's not really going to work in the way that you wanted it to. Uh, already in the chat, people are liking that idea. It might work. Ah, here's the cake you don't want to step on. That's right, it's the Lego birthday cake by Bethany. A feast for the eyes here. Now, were you a fan of, of uh, architecture, uh, Anne? Of course, very much a fan of architecture. And someone, it seems, has been reading my diary. I've been trying to get Anne to jump out of a cupcake for years. With jazz hands on. Nonetheless. Absolutely, there you are in, in, in the, uh, the corner as well. A, a precursor to judging the cakes in this slideshow, as you can see, Bethany yeah. was a bit prescient. Uh, very good, uh, next slide, please. Ah, the Lister Lemon Drizzle Correction Cake. This is a cake that I think looks very classy, Anne. Uh, in that, it is very subdued in its iconography. It's kind of the Lacoste polo shirt of cakes. 
I have one word for the snow cake. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Was the cake a mistake? No. Absolutely. Next slide. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> here's a butt cake. Not a bunt cake, but a butt cake. That's right. You heard correctly. Candles and Their Tales by Chantal Smith comes with a whole uh, instructional or a history of sort of this, this uh, moment in time. And do you want to sort of relive it as you look at this cake? Always happy to relive this memory. One of my fondest and most vulgar. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The only thing better than a butt is a butt with a candle in it. The only thing Not better wrong. than a butt with a candle in it is a butt with a candle in it that's edible. 100% agree. Okay. This to me looks, I'm, I'm no doctor, but this looks like a Scottish ass to me. Could potentially be. I think you're right about that one. I think so, get some sunshine. Okay, next slide, please. Here we have rout cakes, rout cakes. These look like they could chip your teeth. Uh, Kirsten H and Helen Childers. Uh, what do you think about this, Anne? There's no way around this one. They look scrumptious. Okay, I'm a, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little suspicious of them as far as like how, how dry they look. But we'll see. Are they? That's why we have tea. That's why we have butter. Next slide, please. The bedpost. I am Joma. So this one I can see. Uh, there's the bedposts are made with sparklers and with Ann Walker's hair likely to catch fire. I think this one is a potential hazard. Absolutely creditable to the artist for this one. Someone's been reading my diary. I can tell. Someone knows me a little too well. And this is a most impressive scene. Again, a fond memory, happy to relive. If you're unfamiliar, viewers, uh, this is an ode to humping it out on a bedpost, I believe. Uh, most of us as 13 year olds can relate to this in various positions in the household. Uh, very fine work here, very fine work. <laughs> a lot of uh, fondant artistry going on here. Uh, yes, uh, next slide, please. Now this strawberry Victorian sponge cake as uh, baked by Happy Everything, there is no doubt whether this cake is damp, moist, or needs dinky because it is overflowing. What do you think when you're looking at this one, Anne? I think Happy Everything is right. I think I feel happy when I see this. I love the layers. It looks positively scrummy. Multi-layered like so many of us. Sheer poetry, Anne, sheer poetry. Uh, to the next slide, please. Aha, now you may have heard of Little Debbie, but have you heard of Little Debonair? This is, I think, the Fred Astaire of cupcakes. Uh, the Ginger Rogers of cupcakes, of course, does everything this does, but backwards and in heels. This is a very handsome look for this cupcake. Uh, what do you feel about this tribute to you, Anne? I think it's a bake ready for a chorus line. And anything that's ready for a chorus line is ready for me. Absolutely. Now this one is Diane and Ruby on behalf of our beloved Spicy W, Sally Wainwright. And we know who writes the checks, so I hope this makes it to the end. I know the name Wainwright. I tapped her shoulder while she was filming at Shibden. Big fan. Very spooky. Very, very spooky. Never know when I'll turn up. It's true. To the next cake, please. Ah, the locket with pretty flaxen and hair. This one done by Cardboard Mariana. Quite the item there. Now, you must feel slightly torn about this. Now, I believe it was Little Anne who had the pretty flaxen hair. Am I correct about that? That caught fire eventually. Yes. And yet Cardboard Mariana secured it. This is a, like a cake version of, of single white female, quite frankly. How did she get the flaxen hair? That's what I would like to know, Cardboard Mariana. I would like to know that too. Marinara. This one's not funny to me. 
Cardboard Most Man is coming down to the station with us. I think it's a little bit later to discuss this. Yeah, All we right. have. To the next slide, please. Giant Shibden Hall cookie. Thank you for calling it a cookie and not a biscuit, by the way, for my American ears. Uh, this here is by Connie. Connie. And what, it's the brickwork that really impresses me in this one. Uh, Tell me, does this remind you of home in a way that you would feel like you wouldn't eat it? It reminds me of home in a way that I feel like I wouldn't eat it. And I would maybe frame it at first. I thought we were going to disqualify this one because I thought it was a picture. But it turns out it's just very, very impressive baking. Very fine baking work, absolutely. Ari George in the chat saying, great cookie. Bigly agree on that, Ari George. Or biscuit. Or biscuit, yes, respect. Ah, this one here looks like caviar next. No, I'm just kidding. It also is a Simnel cake by the revered and esteemed Dr. Jill Liddington. It does look like caviar to me in the middle. Have you had a Simnel cake before, Anne Lister? Of course. I love Simnel cake. It would be a sin not to love Simnel cake. Did it fall out of a tree? Is it a bird's nest? Maybe, but it's a delicious one. A delicious one. It is suspiciously like, uh, in description, I believe, like a lot of British cakes, very heavy on dried fruit, nuts, and might taste like a bowl of potpourri. Is that where we're headed with this? But all great for a bowel movement. Very welcomed in your timeline, I believe. Very welcomed. Always. Always welcome. Thank you for baking that beautiful looking Simnel cake, Dr. Jill Liddington. And to the next slide, please. The Belcombe sponge cake, which sounds like a form of birth control. Now, looking at this sponge cake, you can see uh, that it is inspired by the Belcombes. In, in what way? In what way? The, Steph Belco, Mary, Mariana, Marinera, all the Belcombs. Well, there's books. And I can see that uh, pages of my diary are among some of the great authors of our time. And I think that's right where they belong. Aha, uh -huh. we, we see here, uh, in code, love books, bribe a librarian. Sarah Rose is perhaps the cleverest of us all. Thank, so. Thank you for submitting this excellent looking cake. Also, good fondant work, Sarah Rose. Yes. Uh, to the next, please. The Madeira cake and Madeira wine chaser. Now, I'm not going to lie. If it was a dessert menu and it had any option that came with booze, it could literally be broken glass and cigarette ash cake. But if it was served with an ice wine, that's what I would select. So I think Amanda Price has done quite a trick here in pairing this with booze. What, what does this make you think? My dear Madeira. That's what it makes me think. Taking one of my favorite beverages and turning it into a cake. It's a yes. It's a big yes. And that orange on top of the cake looks absolutely fresh, will prevent scurvy, which is also a great addition and a way to boost that cake. Now, on to the next slide. Well done, Amanda Price. Ah, here we go. Black Midnight Chocolate Cake for Anne, topped by a flan walker. This is obviously working on multiple levels, uh, both metaphorically and physically. Uh, I think it's a little unfair that the hedgehogs are so cute. As a comic, it's like following a musical comic. Like, I don't need the competition, quite frankly. If I were some of the other bakers out there, I would be highly annoyed that this cake was so adorable because how's, how's it going to lose? Uh, you were a big fan of hedgehogs, yes? Yes, I'd only feel bad eating it because of how cute they are. Um, but has that stopped me from eating weird things in the past? No, and it won't stop me now. No, it would never stop you. Uh, those probably are pure fondant and would definitely stop you up for quite a while, Anne. So just proceed with caution. I'll make a note. 
uh, to, to the next slide, please, even though people probably aren't done looking at these adorable hedgehogs. Ah, this one has a warning. Quite frankly, this entry looks like shit on a plate, and that's because it's meant to. This is Tapeworm Toothbrush, uh, Biliana Popovic, in collaboration with Angie Mags. Uh, this is a reference to one of your escapades, could we call it? Escapades? You can certainly call it that. I only wish my bowel movements were this colorful, is what I can say. Uh, the baker got the length of the worm correct. Decidedly one of the best. Not sure about the disclaimers. I think it's a perfectly reasonable pick. I think uh, this also, I'm not sure if the artist is a fan of American Dad, but it also looks like the golden poo that has been a MacGuffin in several of those storylines. So for me, this is working on multiple levels again. Uh, very, very, very disgusting work that I'm very, very pleased with. Uh, to the next, please. Ah, Limpa Bread. Uh, Caradoc and Percy, you've heard of Limp Biscuit, but have you heard of Limpa Bread? These look like robust Viking horses on these bread rolls. So Caradoc and Percy, tell us a little bit about your horses, please. The lovely creatures. I see we have Percy uh, captured here before he was landed. R.I.P. And this is also uh, one of my favorite types of birthday cake, bread. Very good choice. Please just put a candle in it, serve it with some ice cream. Call it a cake. Call yourself a birthday. It's fun times. And R.I.P. Percy in the chat. And boiled milk. Make sure that milk is boiled. Here we have the Grand Designs entry. If you're familiar with the show Grand Designs, that's where you build a millionaire's house from top to bottom. And that's what they've done with this bake, Shibden Hall by Fionn Brown. Uh, what, now, you didn't want to eat the other one because it was your homestead. I can only imagine what this 3D model is making you feel. I'll tell you what's troubling me. It's so realistic that I'm seeing new projects that I want to do on the home. I, I'm seeing where I want to put an annex. <laughs> Maybe another, another Anne in the house? I don't think so. It's confusing enough in there. Another, there's always room for more Anne. More Anne's. Another tower. Another Lister Lion on there, perhaps? Lister. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. Well, I hope on your birthday, more Anne's, please. Nothing but Anne's all day long. Uh, this is a, a fantastic model. Thank you for sharing this. I hope it's delicious as well. Uh, to the next, please. Ah, Anne's umbrella, this of course being Rihanna's favorite cake. Also a very uh, tricky bit of penguin from the Batman weaponry here. Yes, of course. How long is this umbrella cake? It's probably as long as an umbrella. And we could ask my good and strange friend, Mrs. Bean. She would love this. And we get a little grainy picture of the top hat as well exactly in the in the corner there now the the the, the number is 230 which are I, i'm assuming made with fondant and not baked earthworms which is kind of what they look like but they also uh make a little bit of a heart there which i think is very adorable in the, the 230 there yes a little bit I, of heart. I love it. everybody loving yeah. and lister glad you like it yes thank you beyond for that uh and thank you for this k pollock a uh, wonderful umbrella cake. Looks a little bit like a stingray as well, that umbrella. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little afraid of it. The flappy, the sea flappy flappies are coming to get me. To the next slide, please. A uh, very, very Yorkshire here in the house. Yorkshire Parkin and dessert of Bakewell cheesecake. Bakewell, of course, also being a Yorkshire dessert. Now, are you a fan of the cherry almond combo that is the trademark of the Bakewell and Lister? Yes, I think Bakewell is the right word. It looks like it's baked well. Um, also a fan of the Yorkshire Parkin. Shame George Playforth didn't get to have any before he fell out of a tree. But Veer and I uh, stole it from him and had ourselves a lovely time. 
fantastic. I'm sure you did have a lovely time with beer, eating parkin and other things. To the next slide, please. Yes. Completely beat her chocolate gingerbread. Now I believe this one might be a little bit traumatic for you, Anne. Uh, this one tells a story, I believe. Do you wanna talk about it? I do take issue with the name completely beat her. Yeah, okay. Anne has thrashed me on occasion, but I always come back around. Other than that, <laughs> it looks like a very accurate portrayal of uh, a night in with my Adney. I like that they've used some Cadbury's buttons to complete the backgammon uh, board as well. And also I, I feel that like there's a bit of a uh, wordplay here with completely beat her, if I'm honest, because when you're making a, a cake, you have to completely beat a lot of the ingredients. Mm. They're not all great. I love a pun. To the next, please. We make a move soon. Let's start to get chilly now. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's worked well, though. Eh? That worked really well. Yeah. It did work really well. Thank you. And I dissected a baby once. Lister cake. Now, this is slightly, it's very cheerful and very macabre at the same time. We have the jelly babies decorating the top of the cake, but also several of them have been beheaded from the looks of it to sort of decorate the outer rim of it. What do you think about this? Do I wish I could dissect the cake? Yes. Have I Absolutely. dissected a baby? Yes. And I, I wonder what flavor they are. Well, I think they are, it depends on which one you eat. I think there's lemon babies there and uh, lemon uh, lime babies, babies black currant babies a rainbow of, of babies there. Uh, it does make me somewhat suspect of the sort of uh, function of it though, if you've ever had a flurry or a blizzard from Dairy Queen uh, it, it, with like gum or gummy things in it, it, it doesn't work out. You have to eat them sort of separately from the other items. And that's just a, a technical tip there. Uh, so you might wanna consider that while eating it in. Write that down, yes, please. When you go to Dairy Queen, don't order the, the ones with the gumballs or gummies in them. It's not the way it should work. It's against God and nature. Uh, please, to the next cake. Rainbow Vegetables Anne by uh, Twitter handle Last Port of Call. Uh, as you can see, this is a very rainbowy vegetable selection, uh, but I believe this was built for you with good intentions wanting to put the, the B and M into the LGBT. I mean, message received. I understand that I need to eat more vegetables. It would help my bowel movements. I'm curious about the baker and what their bowel movements looked like after they ate the cake. Uh, you could send me some correspondence about the sort to uh, Shivden Hall, Halifax. Accordingly, we'll know what it's for. I think, you know, it's a true mark of a friend when you're out going for a party. Is If you're somebody who would hold your hair back perhaps while you're ill, but it's another level of friendship that's going to bake you a vegetable cake to help you poop. So I think that's a last port of call indeed. Last port of call indeed. Uh, to the next slide, please. Ah, right. This is the Ann Lister portrait by Alex Chapman. Now this is a very handsome portrait again. Uh, this is one of those cakes where I can't tell if I want to be it or make out with it. Do you know what I mean when I'm talking about how good looking a cake is? I would just say I would, I would hook up with this cake a little bit and just find out what's happening. I think it's a very attractive cake. When you see this, how, how do you feel about it? I feel exactly the same. I feel the same. Look at the flowers that people are saying in the chat, the flowers, are worth noting, I believe. A little Georgia O'Keeffe action maybe happening. They look here. edible. They look appetizing. They do look appetizing. They do look very appetizing and in an O'Keefean sort of way. And I'm comparing, I'm just slightly comparing the profile. Yes. 
I think <laughs> Alex Chapman has nailed this, quite frankly. But it is time for you and Lister as the judge of all of these entries, worthy as they all are. And please do look at the hashtag on Twitter if you want to see all of them, because people went above and beyond, quite frankly. So if you want to see over all 50 entries, do check out the hashtag on Twitter. But do have a think. I believe uh, you might have some awards prepared. I'd say so. We're going to take a second with this one. Okay. I think we're ready. Okay, so the first award that you would like to give out today. It's for most vulgar. And it's going to. <laughs> it well, couldn't be anybody much. but. <laughs> By Viliana Popovich, I hope that's how you pronounce your name, in collaboration with Angie Mags. Some people find this vulgar. I find it pretty part of the course, but definitely needs to be uh, awarded here. Absolutely. I think uh, there could be no end. This was, I believe, was baked with the actual purpose in mind of winning this award. I'm not sure how they knew that we were going to have it, but I feel like they did that on purpose. Well, uh, yes. To the next award. Congratulations, Biliana. Congratulations. The next award is? Verifying Bank. And the winner is? Those two. Black Midnight Chocolate Cake brand topped by a flan. Walker, we love a good pun. We love a good hedgehog. We love a good cake. Congratulations to Jem on this. I think you put a lot of work in there to those hedgehogs. Handsome, adorable hedgehogs. Double up, as British people love to do, putting custards and flans on top of cakes and things like that, like a trifle. So in a certain tradition, if you will. Congratulations, Jem. To the next award, please. The Ann Lister Bake Off Award for? Best Decorated. Goes to... None other than Shibden Hall. Fantastic. I think uh, this is an excellent, excellent model. I can't imagine how long it took uh, to make these. I will say after we get through these uh, awards, if we, you know, we want to invite any of the bakers to turn their mics on, uh, do feel free or to put in the chat the labor that you endured to win these virtual awards. Look at that, everybody. Do better is what I'm going to say to all of you. It's an amazing cake. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> a note for everyone. A note better. for everyone. Just try better. Okay, do better. <laughs> Hashtag do better indeed. Uh, to the next award, please. Oh, the endless. I, I didn't know we were having a star baker here. I have the fantastic job of announcing star baker for the endless to bake off is none other than my beloved. Slightly confused, always sweet, Anne Walker. That is so lovely. I... What's happening, Starbaker? Good Lord. Um, I'm making cold fowl tongue for dinner. Yum. her sleeves as puffy as a cream horn. It's no wonder you love her so dearly. Who wouldn't? Who, who wouldn't, I ask you? You're only human, Anne Lister, after all. Ah, is it time for a toast already? Toast? I believe so. A toast to our Anne. As we all know, 
and it's incredibly giving. I'm still unwrapping the greatest gift she ever gave me, a venereal disease. And wouldn't have an itchy crotch without you. That's a little tidbit for you. Another thing many people might not know about, and did you hear me cross octaves there? Another thing many people might not know about. Another thing many people might not know about, and, and where's that marrying list of she's not married? And wishes she could be as funny as Marion, but I tell you. Marion's got a career on the stage. And loves to tease me about my drink. And when I tell her, I tell Anne, you poop in a soup bowl, Anne. Did I have to tell you about the time? Did I have to tell you about the time? Anne and I took the carriage to York. You know York, it's, it's York. And we ran into Mr. Frank. And Mr. Frank, Mr. Frank looked me in the eye and he said, Did you have a hot sherry, dear? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, serious, serious now, serious. Who am I? To our end. May she all oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Anne. Clink. Fantastic. I tell you what, Tib is like the Jeff Ross of these roasts. Fantastic work. Cheers, everybody. Marion is pretty great, though. Marion's all right. Fantastic. I think everybody is thrilled to be celebrating Ann Lister's 230th birthday. Thank you, the real Ann Lister, for being here today for this. We'd, of course, like to tell you where to follow Ann Lister's very good friend, Amanda Walgrove, here on this. Take a screenshot so that you can know the right channels to follow uh, thank you for allowing me to host this. Uh, here's a, a, a headshot of me pre-lockdown with my social medias, if you so like. There I am. Look at me with a haircut. <laughs> and then finally, do please follow Packed with Potential, the organizers of this event. They put so much work and love <laughs> and Lister history. Uh, it's fantastic. I think that was a real life dog uh, on the call, but I'm excited and I love meeting people's dogs and cats. So I welcome you all now to turn your cameras and mics on. We can hang out and have some birthday revelry if you like before we release you to your Saturdays. Hello. That's it. Should we? Should we go? <laughs> Very good. Look at this lovely assortment of people. There's four screens of it, according to my Zoom. <laughs> Most excellent. Is anybody here that uh, had a bake in the slideshow that wants to tell us about their process, by the way? <laughs> Will Jill Liddington please tell us about the Simnel cake a little bit and if it does taste like potpourri? It, do it doesn't taste like potpourri, but it was wonderful to make. It's two layers of marzipan, uh, almond, almond icing, one in the middle, which goes uh, into the oven with cake above and, be and below, and then one on top once the um, cake comes out of the oven. And I'm a complete Simnel cake addict. Any opportunity, any excuse to bake a Simnel cake around East, especially for Anne Lister's birthday, I grab it with both hands. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, to be honest, the way you describe it, now I'm sad that I roasted it so much because it sounds delicious. I am a fan of Mars <laughs> again. <laughs> Well done. Any other bakers? There's Fionn. Fionn, can you tell us a little bit about your baking? Yeah. So the, how long did that take you? Um, somebody else asked me that. And I think we asked, well, I think it was about 25 to 30 hours. <laughs> 
Whoa. Isn't that the Malcolm Gladwell rule? Aren't you like brilliant at it now? It's like, you're, you're only a few short of 10,000, I think, 10,000 hours of making. <laughs> Yeah. So, so what did, was it, did it ever did you did you have any like near misses with it like did it collapse or you know what I mean like was it delicate um I mean I, I haven't baked in about eight years so it was um it was a bit of a challenge but I really enjoyed it but I, d I don't know um the tower was a bit difficult to do um because it's so narrow oh, um yeah it's just a, it, it was a bit wobbly here and there but managed to prop it up and hide sort of imperfections yeah i tell you what that was the most british response to that the, the tower was a bit difficult <laughs> wobbly excuse its imperfections <laughs> yeah you did all right <laughs> any other bakers want to tell us about their process their their success their failure any great baking stories go on steph tell us about the thermometer come on other than it's massive, was massive. <laughs> I think uh, just over three feet. So about a meter. How many umbrellas? I didn't, I didn't get to measure it with the umbrella before I let my coworkers dig in. Oh, that's fantastic though. I mean, are you, so you, it's been eaten, it's been et. It's been mostly et. There's finally uh, about one normal size cake amount left that is still sitting in my fridge, so. There's still some work to be done. How many okay. people did it feed, Steph? It's freezing. At least 15 over like a day and a half. Yeah, because it's one of those like party hoagies, isn't it? You know, like the sort of subs that you can get to cater a party. <laughs> yeah, it took a while. We got through like midday of the first day that I brought it to work because no, I think people were one, afraid of it. The two, they had no idea what it was. Um, so people were just afraid to cut into it to actually start eating it. So, so it took bringing it back in for day two to finally make some progress. Uh, I think people also wanna hear about the rolls on your cake, uh, on the apple cake, if you don't mind talking about that. Apple cake. The roll, oh. you mean just the hairdo, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how did you do that? Oh, that was just, I mean, it was just the same pastry that I just cut into the shape of the, of the hairdo that, that, um, that is used in um, Gentleman Jack. And um, it came out quite nicely. And then I had to sugar the, the non-hair bits to make the hair pop out of it. And, um, oh, by the way, I'm just being given a piece. Just oh. having some now. Bellas. It's Were you delicious. very good at coloring in as a child? I feel like you would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Always stay within the lines, right? Absolutely. Uh, that's, so um, Cardboard Mariana is actually in frame right now. <laughs> um, so she's a little offended because um, apparently there was some um, issue with the flax and hair. So she's uh, refusing to say anything. Uh, yeah. But um, that's why she's refusing to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> Not because she's made of cardboard. Uh, exactly. So, uh, but she did want me to tell everybody that uh, the only reason she had that locket is because Anne left it at her house the last time she was there. So. Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh. Can't be confirmed at this time. <laughs> wow. Can I ask though, like in all seriousness, what was the flax and hair made out of? Was that just like lemon shavings or what did you have there? That was spaghetti squash. <laughs> the, the, the pubes of the vegetable world. Another vegetable. The best part about an online bake off is that realistically, these don't have to be edible. <laughs> As as I, I will say I tried it and I do not recommend eating spaghetti squash on top of an iced cake. It's not that good. Or in general. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> what about, uh, I know there's other people here on the chat that uh, also baked something. Anybody else want to come, come uh, put their mics on and, and tell us about their bake? around looking at people to call out. Kay's here. You made a cake, didn't you, Kay? Yep, I sure did. Tell us about your cake process, if you don't mind. Process was, mmm, I'll make an umbrella and then it will start looking at like a squashed skate and then it will look like a dead crow, but maybe someone might think it's an umbrella. 
how did you get your food dye that that black? Did, do they sell black food dye, or did you have to do that? I cheated. I got the I got the ready coloured stuff, so I just had to roll it on onto the dead looking crow, and then make an umbrella shape. Ah, very good. Okay, I did not know that they sold it like in a black sheet. It's revolting. It's <laughs> amazing, though. And it did look like it looked like one of the umbrellas that you see uh, on the street after a particularly difficult storm here in the UK. Yeah, or something that they leave at Glastonbury on the floor that's been squashed. The good point. Good point. It did indeed. It was very effective. Great. Uh, we have a request here uh, for Sarah Rose to tell us about the cake. We, somebody wants to know. Where's Sarah Rose in the chat? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay, so you are looking very mysterious today with your lighting. And I feel like oh, you're yeah. in the protection program. Tell us about your cake. My flat's a bit dark. Um, <laughs> the cake is an authentic recipe, which you're supposed to beat for half an hour, but I got a bit bored. So I beat it for about 10 minutes. So it's quite dense. But that's where decorating comes in because I just covered it with like lots of um, fondant and made it into books because I work in a library. So. Oh, so it had a, a special like a, a special kind of um, connection to you personally as a librarian as well. Yeah, it was a themed. It was called the library's um, entry into the competition. Although, I mean, I, I've said you say you worked in a library. You could be the library's bouncer. I don't know. Are you a li Are you not a librarian? I'm not a qualified <laughs> librarian, so I get paid less than a librarian, but I, yeah. Library How you the Dewey Decimal Solid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and uh, I had to put some diary scribbles on as well, so. Of course, that must have been a challenge to do as well. Any, but any of the bakers that tried to do um, the Crypt Hand, uh, that must have been a challenge to do, I would, I would guess. Yeah, the hardest bit was just the actual using fondant stuff to the painting of it rather than the crypt. Uh, did anybody use, anybody use fondant that like is not a fan of fondant? Do you know what I mean? Like, did anybody work with fondant and you're like, gross, I'm just gonna peel this off when I'm gonna eat the cake? Yeah, that's what I've done. It's disgusting, yeah. Yeah, fondant can get in the sea, right? I mean, I know this is the wrong group. <laughs> it's tough, fondant. Uh, any, any other bakers here? Any other people working in the medium of fondant? want to chat. I don't know whether to be Amanda or Anne right now. I think I'm just Amanda. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. At this point, it must be a little bit, uh, where does one end and where does one begin? I think so. Uh, but we're glad to see your Tib. Can you, do you want to talk a little bit about the process of discovering how to characterize Tib? Because this was your first Tib video, right? Yeah, the Pact with Potential team, uh, suggested it I hadn't even thought of it and they um they suggested that she do a toast slash roast of Anne and they were kind enough to compile a bunch of um diary entries and uh little you know bits about Tib and send me some pictures and literature and uh I kind of gave myself like a crash course in Tib and then um got wild did get wild. I liked. Uh, I, I liked. I liked the um the test screen between uh, Tibbs uh, outbursts was very good. Good yeah, choice. She, if anyone if anyone needs that test screen, she uh she does. It's Tib. Uh, quick nod out to Bella Owens. Uh, hat down in the corner of the two thirty. There is that a biscuit or is it um what's going on there, Bella? It is a biscuit. Yeah, it's a shortbread and uh. The top hat and the icing was a bit of um a bugger I was gonna say a swear word but <laughs> um it turned out nice they're really nice I'm just not very happy that it's not black I tried really hard cookie I tried really hard to make them black and look like Anne's top hat but this is the best I could do. You know what? Things get sun bleached, and you know it potentially has just had a good day out in the sun. I think yeah. they. I think yeah, they look we'll go with that. So. <laughs> Somebody's put dry as a stick in the chat. Very good. <laughs> Which is lovely. Uh, 
who else? And Pat, we, here. hi, Pat. How's how's everything? And this birthday right. weekend. The Queen of Chats still happening. What's the next thing that's happening, Pat? Oh, you're on mute. Very oh, Zoom of you. You're on mute. <laughs> it's uh, packed with potential on April 24th. And Jill Liddington, I see you there on the screen. I still want to get you back. I'm hoping to come back, Pat. I really Excellent. am. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, you have to tell us, I saw your bake that you held up during today's live stream. What is that? Um, that actually, I did not bake it. I bought it. And that's what's left of it right there. <laughs> There's also a cat. What cat is that? A cat? There was a cat that just walked by, right? Am I crazy? Am I, am I too much of a lesbian that I'm just seeing cats? Where no, he's... The cat was on, on Bella's on screen. On my screen? No, he didn't. Oh, it wasn't on Bella's screen. Okay, you moved on my Zoom. I think you went from one corner to another and I uh -huh. saw Bella's cat and I thought it was in your house. <laughs> oh, I do actually have a 23 pound cat, but he's sleeping somewhere. <laughs> oh, don't try to pick him up. Don't throw your back out. Yeah. Pat, Thank are you. you are you a Nyack, Pat? I am a Nyack. Nyack says hello to you, Amanda. Oh, I say hello to Nyack. Did you get that? Um, did you get your big good from Didier? I absolutely did. Yes, I well missed done, you. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Hey, Amanda, you have to go back and watch the recording of this because as you move against that backdrop, your hair is doing a really interesting dance. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the analyst are shimmy. <laughs> yeah, the, the hair has a life of its own. Hey, listen, I have to I have to run and decompress from the, the talk, but I want to congratulate every single one of the bakers. My God, you guys are creative. Well done. Yeah, that's a good idea. Round of applause. Round of applause, one handed, but you know, that's the phone. Bye. See you soon. Have a great weekend and really well done. So creative and packed with potential. Well done, you. Absolutely. Hey, Pat. Good yeah. to see you in a few weeks. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Pat. Bye. Uh, I love the word. Somebody's, uh, uh, Ari has said uh, that they have a cat that inveigles herself, which is such a, a good a, a verb for a cat. I've never thought of applying it to my cat, but quite right. Kitty Sanchez inveigles herself. In That's all they do, really. 100%. <laughs> they are the most inveigling of animals. Do you, do you have a cat, Amanda? Um, I have a dog and she's right here. She's been trying to get to me this whole time. Oh my God, who is this dog? Gilda. Gilda, uh, is it after Gilda Radner? Absolutely. Yeah, very nice. Jill Liddington has a parrot right now. Park parrot, <laughs> park cat, park cat. We have a, a kitten um, from the RSPCA in Halifax who thinks she's a parrot because she loves <laughs> going on people's shoulders and sitting, sitting up here and around their necks. But one of the things I wanted to say about baking and cakes is um, obviously we all did it because of the Anne Lister birthday weekend, but one of the nice things besides cutting yourself a slice or two or three and enjoying is I well, took um, slices, so slices of uh, the Simnel cake to our, our neighbors around where we live, which is fairly rural. And I've suddenly become the most popular person in the community because <laughs> when you arrive at somebody's front door with a few slices of uh, Easter cake, they think you're fantastic. So uh, it was, it's been great. That is Thank legitimate you. wisdom. Uh, the Simpsons taught us that you don't win friends with salad, but Jill Liddington taught us that you do win friends with Simnel cake. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And it's a but, cake for uh for Easter, is it isn't it? Is that part of what it is or no? It it, it um was traditionally um Mothering Sunday apparently, but has more recently, I not very recently, become an Easter cake. I've always associated with Easter, yeah. And now with Anne Lister's birthday. Yes. A new association. Is there anybody that in the grid that um, made something that they want to talk about uh, that I haven't sort of picked on yet? Do feel free to put your, your mic on if you want to talk uh, um, about what you made. I'd love to hear about the no cake. The no cake, oh yeah. So, well, so I think lemon drizzle, right, is like the king of all cakes. I don't know, I'm just putting that out there, right? So I chose like my favorite cake with like my favorite like listerism. So, I think everyone knows the no anyway, but um, in her diary, like um, when Anne like makes a slight mistake, like just a little one, like my favorite one is just 
she got the time slightly wrong when she was, I think she was writing letters or something. And she got the time like wrong by about 10 minutes. And instead of crossing it out, she was like writing like, no. And she writes it all throughout the journal and it always makes me laugh. And I can just imagine her being like, ah, oh, fuck, it's not the right one. You know, it's not the right time. Um, instead of crossing it out. You know, yeah, like cross it herself that she got it wrong. So I thought I'd just, yeah, make that into a cake. That is such a, that's such a good, and and, and no one else did it. <laughs> so it was well, like, well, the plain hand was so fiddly. Like I know people did crypt hand and yeah. like, I, yeah, yeah, that must have been hard, but the plain hand was really hard. And uh, Rachel, talk, talk to us about your cake experience. Me, my, uh, my cake experience is I didn't do one, but okay. it's because I was doing, oh no, different Rachel. No, no, you, you, I, I saw the yeah, hand yeah. Okay, okay, I, I, yeah, so no, my cake experience is that I didn't do one for this. I love eating cake. I have hips to prove it, but I'll spare you all that. Um, <laughs> are amazing. And I didn't do one because um, as the project manager for Calderdale Cultural Destinations, you know, so many of us talk about us having the best job in the world. Um, and we heard Anne Choma earlier been interviewed um, with Helena Whitbread by Pat Eskay, of course. And if that's not the best job in the world, Anne Choma, I don't know what is, but I'm, I'm doing all right. This is a fantastic job promoting Halifax and Calderdale um, to um, the, the world. Um, largely, I have to say to my, um, my Lister sister community. And um, so, yeah, I've been creating 23 podcasts, um, read aloud um, um, birthday diary entries um, of Anne's, read aloud by some of our friends. Um, some of you here may have already heard them. Some of you here may have already read one for me. So thank you. They're going out at 10 and six, shift and time. Um, every day until the 12th of um, April. I've just cheekily, sneakily put a little link in the chat. Um, so if you haven't already seen them, um, you can find the link there. I'm tweeting about it. It's out on some of the Facebook group pages. But of course, that's just one of the many things we've tried to put on. We wanted you here in person. Pandemic's kind of, well, shit that up, frankly, hasn't it? It's really, really not helped things. So um, we've put some online events on. This one, I mean, what fun. You know what? This is just brilliant and and thank you so much Packwood for for the, your creativity and everyone for your bakes there have been some spectacular bakes there um of course Sarah Rose at libraries the one and only Sarah Rose if you don't know her ah, she's she's impressive um she's done a brilliant interview with some of you from Packed With we've got Shibden Hall who've put some films and some other events online we've got a video from the Peace Hall tomorrow we've got a um, uh, an online talk again from the libraries with Clara Barley, the author of The Moss House tomorrow night. So West Yorkshire Archive Service did a, an event yesterday. We've had so much that we've put on, you know, in the absence of your joining us. Can't wait to see you in Halifax and Calderdale. And I've also put on a little um, extended introduction to Calderdale for those of you that have never been or who haven't been for a little while. Um, for reasons outside of our control. That's all on the same link as the readings. Um, and um, have a look, have a listen and start planning. We can't wait to see you here. But thank you so much, everybody, for everything you've done to help us celebrate the wonderful Anne Lister's 230th birthday. So thank you. Happy birthday, Anne. Yay. Most excellent. It's great. I'm very excited for uh, the Anne Lister birthday weekend next year. Uh, are people in the chat, are people planning on coming over? I'm, I'm here in Manchester, so don't be fooled by my dumb accent. Uh, I, I am uh, <laughs> on, on, I'm on the uh, Lancaster side, but I'm definitely going to come over for the events and everything. So people are making the jump from wherever they are. Excellent. Excellent. Amanda, are you coming over? Yeah, I'm coming over. Fantastic. I feel like there should be an Edinburgh style solo show done by that point. <laughs> I want to book a theater somewhere. <laughs> no, I should look into that. <laughs> Please do. Uh, very good. Is there anything else that uh, anybody from PAC with uh, potential want to shout about? Just thank you, everybody that participated in this. I don't think we um, anticipated this many delicious uh, treats flooding our timelines over the three days <laughs> leading up to it. So it's been great. Yeah, I just was so surprised that there are so many entries and I'm, I was following them all on Twitter. And I kept on saying, you won't believe what, what cake has just come up on, on, on my phone. And they've just been wonderful, more and more wonderful. And I don't know how many entries they were, but it just sort of hit a, a right note um, at the, this particular point in time. And Lister's birthday when we couldn't actually meet together. So great idea. And Lister Bake Off. Yeah, what a, what a bunch of uh, can-do people making something fun happen. 
Well, it's been my pleasure to be a part of this at all, uh, just monkeying around and roasting cakes. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope you have a great Easter weekend, and uh, I hope everybody has a bank holiday off. And uh, just, then we see you next year and online and other projects and all. And big round of applause for our host, Kate, and our Ann Lister, Amanda. Ah, thank you. Hey, thank you guys for hosting this for us. Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. Happy birthday, Ann. Happy birthday, Ann. 230. <laughs> wow. Indeed. See everybody soon, I hope. <laughs>